Time now for Sunday House Call. It is. Us, as always, is Dr. Isidore Rosenfeld. Here he is. See. The Rossi he, Distinguished <laughs> Professor of Clinical Medicine at the Wild Cornell Medical Center, recipient of the United Nations Citizens of the World Award. Good to see you, Doc. A lot nice to, to cover. Here. We have a lot of emails this week. In fact, we were flooded uh, with emails this week yeah. about fish oil and omegas. You wanted to give us some more yeah, information? But I wanted to clarify one thing about the pine bark we talked about last week. Unfortunately, it goes by a very difficult name, Pycnogenol. And we received many, many emails asking if I was talking double talk and what could, could I give them. So I want to put the spelling on there, Pycnogenol. Okay, P-Y-C, there it is, Pycnogenol. Now, I was asked, is there a special brand of it? And uh, w which one do I use? There is no special brand. Uh, in these in these days, I buy mine at Costco. So uh, you can get it in any health food store, Costco, any uh, drug store has it, and it does not require a prescription. It's pycnogenol. Take 100 milligrams, and as I said last week, it's said to help arthritis. It may help menopausal symptoms, and it may improve cognitive function. I know use that in the uh, spelling bee, the national spelling bee. <laughs> yeah. So you know that, Daniel, those kids yeah, who do that? Yeah, no, yeah. you know that. Uh, if you know the Dr. Rosenfeld as well as we do, he says two bits of, bits of advice. Baby aspirin and fish oil every yeah. morning, and uh, you have some more information about fish oil. Yeah, we got a lot of emails, as uh, Jamie said. Um, was there a difference between uh, fish oil and flaxseed oil. Now, they both contain omega-3, but I have to tell you that, in my view, the fish oil is better for it. There's nothing wrong with the flaxseed oil, but the fish oil contains EPA and DHA, two of its components, and they are very, uh, uh, they, they focus on heart health. Um, a flaxseed oil has a different kind of fatty acid. It's called ALA. Now, if you take a very large amount of the flaxseed oil, you may get enough ALA that gets converted to the other two. But it's much simpler for you to take the omega-3 in fish oil. Uh, um, that's my advice. You can take both if you want to, but take the omega-3. Okay, Doc. Doctor, thank you. People with digestive problems have probably heard that they shouldn't eat nuts or popcorn. They know that it could cause and certainly aggravate diverticulitis. But there's a new study that debunks that theory. These people would be very happy to know they can eat those things. Now, let me tell you what this is all about. It's very common. Diver uh, diverticulum is a little outpouching in the large bowel. They're like, it's, they're like fingers. And if you get a routine a colonoscopy, you may be told that you have diverticula, several of these um, outpouchings. Now, traditionally, and, and I tell you, one third of people up to the age of 60 have it. So it's very common. Don't be worried if you're told you have it. By the time you're 85, I think 80% of people have these diverticula. Now, they normally do not cause any symptoms, but sometimes these little pockets, these little outpouchings become inflamed. They cause pain and uh, bowel habit changes and uh, fever. That's called diverticulitis. Now, I have to tell you that for years, doctors were telling uh, patients not to eat nuts, and popcorn and seeds of any kind, the theory being that these seeds could get into the little pouches and inflame them. That turns out to be a myth. It's not true. If you have diverticula that are not yet inflamed, that so many people have, you can eat whatever you want. Continue to have a high fiber diet, have all the nuts you want, the popcorn you want, the seed foods you want, uh, they will not cause diverticulitis. However, once you have an attack of diverticulitis, once these diverticula do become inflamed, then you have to change your diet to go on a low a residue, low fiber diet. But that's only when you have symptoms. The food does not cause these problems. All right, Doc. Uh, now here's a kind of unusual question from Joanna, Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about this. Uh, she's worried about granite kitchen counters. You know the granite kitchen tops? There's been some recent news that they could emit 
radiation. So, Doc, uh, is it a real danger? Should you know a lot of people now? It's the, the big thing to have a granite kitchen top. Yeah. Well, well, if we were pressed for time, Eric, I would give the answer in one word: No. Forget about it. There is no. You would have to sit on your granite kitchen top <laughs> without moving for one year uh, to get a hundred and fifty thousand of the uh, radiation that this is set to contain. I don't know where this anxiety start came from. I think it had to do with competition among various manufacturers of different kinds of kitchen tops. But it's true that the granite does have some radon, some radioactive material, but so does everything in the house. It's in the air and it's, and it's in very, very minute amounts. In my view, there is never enough radiation from these granite tops to cause you any concern. I have to say in that regard, I, I research this because this isn't a thing that I think about every day, the radiation from the granite top in my kitchen. But so I researched it and I found one paper uh, by somebody who uh, analyzed thousands of these and found a couple of cases where there was more radiation from the granite top than, uh, than is, is good for you. But the answer is no, granite tops are safe. However, if you've been reading these things and you're worried about it, listen, why worry about it? Get somebody Move. to measure. <laughs> get somebody to measure how much uh, radiation is being emitted in, mm -hmm. emitted in the form of radon from your granite top. Right. You can buy those radon detectors. I don't want any radiation in my house, but I'm glad you at least put some yeah, people well, at ease. If you don't want any, there's no place to. It's everywhere. Can't hide. No. Right. Doctor, we wanted to ask you about this because a lot of people are very interested in juice. Plus, I don't even know what it is. Is it something that I should look into and everybody else as well? This is very interesting. I get asked this because the Juice Plus promotions quote me as saying that it's effective. Now, I have to tell my viewers something. I've said this many times. Whenever I tell you about a product and I mention a brand name, I want you to know that never in my entire life have I ever been paid or accepted any money from any manufacturer for saying anything good about a product. I only say it if I believe it. Now about 15 years ago when I was health editor of Vogue magazine, I came across a, a, a paper, uh, the news about Juice Plus. Juice Plus is an extract of fresh fruits and vegetables. They, they, they process it and they put it into capsules and you take two capsules of one in the morning, of the fruit in the morning and two capsules of vegetable in the evening. I think it's a good product. I use it. Well, my family uses it. But it's oh, you should only take it if you are not getting enough fruits and vegetables in your diet. That's the best way to get it. But some people don't. And in such, <clears throat> for such people, I recommend Juice Plus. Now, I have to tell you, there are other such uh, products on the market. There's one uh, by Health Foods. Uh, there, there are several that are, I think, probably equally good. But the answer to the question, is Juice Plus good for you? The answer is yes, if you need it and don't consume enough fruits and vegetables. All right, Doc. Uh, in a moment, we're going to tell you about a hurricane, yes, racing across the Atlantic.